seventy percent of the contracts that I reviewed, right, um, for a vehicle purchase, the issue started before the retail installment sales contract. So this is Jermaine Credit Fiend. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video. On my channel, we you know we share information. I share information. Others share information. We help one another out. We don't attack. We don't go and attack. There's no need for that, right? So I'm going to share some information with you all, all right? This is where the problem starts, right here. <laughs> for everyone that was able to provide me, I said, hey, listen, when I say I review your retail installment sales contract, I want I need that vehicle purchase order as well. And for the ones that did, I'm like, okay, I, you know, I just went for the first 10 that I came across. And I reviewed it. I'm like, you know what? Seven of them, you know, that means three dealers did the right thing. Seven, seven though, seven. That's 70% of just the 10 that I just randomly picked, right? Had these had this issue right here. The problem started before the retail installment sales contract. It started here in the vehicle purchase order. Some some states call them buy order or whatever. Hey, then, hamburger, cheeseburger, same street, different address. So this is what I meant right here, what I mean right here. That that price of the vehicle and all that, well, on this document right here, the only thing you have to, you agreeing to, what are you agreeing to purchase? The vehicle, right? The buy the vehicle, that's it. But what, I, what I've seen, right, is <clears throat> people have a service contract, gap, and all the stuff listed on there, on their, um, on the purchase order so to the untrained eye or the, you know the, the the uneducated right must be real like you know you didn't know you would think it, it appears that this stuff is mandatory let's be real <clears throat> if you don't know that a vehicle purchase order is not supposed to contain it's only supposed to have just the price of the vehicle and everything that you know is mandatory then you wouldn't you would it would be normal for you would think it's normal for them to put service contract gap and all this other stuff on there right i'm just being real with you now some of us may say well no i knew you know you didn't you, well you knew better but not all not everyone and 70 percent of them i got obviously they didn't know right and you know the 30 percent that just because a dealer just didn't put it on there or maybe these individuals told them that i don't know like in my case same thing so check this out yeah all this right here got to be checked out but this is the meat and potatoes of a purchase order right is the charges the price of the vehicle. People, that's the advertised price of the vehicle. Okay. Now here's the thing though. I mean, well, I'm gonna keep going. And then you list all the mandatory stuff. Okay. Like tax, title, tag, registration, and all that. You know, tax. You see that. So that's it. That's all you agreeing to purchase. But the problem is you got you guys got service contract, gap, you got this, you got that, all the stuff on there, even here, dealer dock fee, right? And that's why I say check your state law. Because here in the state of South Carolina. It's called a closing fee. It doesn't matter what it's called. It's all the same thing, people. They have that price. What has to be? This is coming from South Carolina um, Attorney General, Consumer Affairs Division. Include the closing fee in the advertised price of the motor vehicle. <laughs> right? That's period. That's it. So let's give you an example. So let's say the, the cost, the advertised price was 25000 Okay? 25000 and... What I should see here, though, if they're going to have a mount here for dock fee, let's say it's five hundred, then the price of the vehicle right here should go should say twenty four thousand five hundred, right? And then you pay the taxes on just the price of the vehicle. The dock fee, you see that is after the taxes, but the dock fee would be that five hundred right here because even the advertised price of twenty five thousand included the five hundred dollar um dock fee. But when it comes to the the actual price of the vehicle, cash price of the vehicle. You strip that away, and it should say twenty four thousand five hundred, and then you can see the dock fee here five hundred. The problem is, this is what the problem is: the the vehicle, the people. I mean, the contracts that I review, it'll say twenty five thousand. Then they're gonna have the tax title tag and all that plus five hundred dollar dock fee. It's supposed to be some states. It's supposed to be included in the advertised price. Like here in the state of South Carolina, I know Georgia is the same way, and many other states the same way. Right. The problem is you didn't. Ask for gap service contract because no one disclosed the uh the the terms and conditions with you because you just agreed to purchase the vehicle. But a lot of you all, when you saw it there, you thought it was mandatory. Right? And I understand you thought it was mandatory. So what happened was now on the retail installment sales contract is there. 
right? On the itemization of, of the amount financed, that second sheet or whatever, you see it there, dot fee, service contract, gap, you know, wheel protection and all this other stuff. You Because you, you saw it here on the purchase order, you thought it was mandatory. Well, it wasn't. It's not mandatory, people. It's not mandatory. The, the purchase order should only contain the mandatory fees. That's it. And a dock fee is not mandatory. That's right. You can negotiate that. And that's a, a mistake that a lot of you all are making. You there paying dock fees. I'm not paying a dealer a dock fee to buy their, their vehicle. Why do I have to pay you to buy your vehicle? I mean, I'm already paying for the vehicle. I'm not going to pay you to do the paperwork and all that stuff. No, you can negotiate that. I don't want that. Take that 500 out. I can, if you, if, if $500, if they're not going to negotiate and $500 is going to blow the deal, I'm walking out the front door or the back door, the side door, whatever door. The only thing they're going to see is my back and my tag number from the vehicle I'm driving off the lot with. That's it. I mean, my vehicle that I came there with, unless I caught a ride or something. You got to, don't be afraid to walk away. Some of you thinking that I have to get this deal right here. I have, man, it, it, how many dealerships in your area? Others, you know, they're not the only dealership that's selling that that make and model that vehicle, or whatever, right? But some of you all feel a trap and feel like, well, I'm here. They gave me this. I signed that purchase order, so I have to buy the vehicle. No, the hell you don't. No, you don't. You can change your mind anytime. But that's the problem. Seventy percent of the people had all these fees on the purchase order, and you thought it was mandatory, and it now is on a retail installment sales contract. It, it wasn't mandatory. Dot fee, not mandatory. Service contract and all that, it's not mandatory. The only thing that did was made the advertise, I mean, that made the the amount finance go higher. And some of you all, you got the little higher interest rate because of the amount finance. But if you would have just made it lower, you could have probably got a better APR. Or some of you got denied because of that total amount of the amount finance was too much. It was too high. It, it exceeded the, the amount that that bank was willing to lend you. That's right. But they're not going to tell you that. But I will. I've been there. I've been a salesman, people. All right. I know. I, I'm not saying I, I'm in the salesman. I know it all. No, 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 no. See, my, my experience in credit helped me out with this too, right? <laughs> and my my uh my pre-license for dealers dealer, you know, South Carolina dealer went through the license course or whatever, breaking this stuff down so we'll know how not to get in hot water. Because believe it or not, consumers, you got a lot of rights. I mean, you got a lot, you got the upper hand on the dealer. People just don't know that. They think the dealer has the upper hand. No, you the consumer, because it's a very thin line be between violating the consumer rights or not. You see what I'm saying? But if you were unaware, then you wouldn't know. Like most of you all didn't know that the, the purchase order, right, should only contain mandatory fees, mandatory charges, tax, title, tag, registration. That's it. All the mandatory stuff. That's it. Right. Optional dealer options or dealer add ons are service contract. Those are options. Service contract gap dealer dock fee. It's optional, people. It's not mandatory. OK, it's not mandatory. And you also want to make sure that. You check the state law or the, you know, of your state law, if you if you purchase a vehicle in your state, then you need to get to know your state law and what you can what you're supposed to pay at a dealership and whatnot. You relying on. The dealer to tell you everything. Mm? And just like in my case, the general manager, I went, I, I wrote, I, I only deal with general managers and hire people. I don't I don't deal with sales managers and finance managers and all that. Uh-uh. When there's an issue, <clears throat> the general manager now going back and forth. I sent him a letter, he responded back. I sent him another letter, he responded back. The last letter I sent, okay, this is my I'm not sending nothing else after this right here. This right here gotta go higher, way higher than you, buddy. Right? Because I it's not I'm not going to keep going back and forth, you know. Um, and because initially I only wanted the amount that I was overcharged, one thousand nine hundred six dollars. Give me that back, and we good. I've been doing this in this business for twenty six years. And it, first of all, I didn't ask you for no damn resume, right? I don't, I don't get. I didn't ask you how long you was doing it. And if you were doing it for twenty six years like this, then you've been doing it wrong for twenty six years. But you got the right one today. See, some of you have the upper hand, but you know, and you feel like, well, it's gonna be hard because the dealer, the dealer is not gonna do. The dealer's not gonna do what? Comply with state law? I get the damn by the dealer policy. Who cares? What does the state law say though? Which one's higher? Which one supersedes? Everybody always talking about state, federal Trump state and all this other stuff. But when it comes to 
<laughs> the dealer, you scared of the dealer because the dealer's policy said this, but you got your state law right there. Why you why didn't you think had that same mentality and say, okay, well, if, well, you can have your policy, guy, but the state law says that this stuff is supposed to be included in the advertised price. Okay? People, you have the upper hand, right? You don't walk in a dealership green. Like, well, hell, at least put on the front like you know. <laughs> if you don't know, act like you know. <laughs> you're not there to get screwed over. You're there to purchase a vehicle. You're there to negotiate an acceptable price. That's it. If you want to pay sticker price, that's fine. Any dealership I go to and they say they're unwilling to go down on the price at all, that's the set price, I'm I'm, I'm gone. I did that for my 7 Series BMW. I had, I showed the dealer, the the the, uh, the salesman, I said, listen, sir, listen, let me show you who you're dealing with. Your vehicle, I'm here because you're number one on the list, but let me show you number two and number three. I got three options. So, I don't have no issue scratching your ass off the list and go to number two, okay? I I'm just telling you, I'm not paying this right here for this vehicle, but I'm willing to pay this. That's a reasonable price. Nope, can't do it. Say less. I jump, in, I'm, I'm gone. I'm going to number two. You know what they did? They called me, the salesman. Hey, great news, man. We talked to the uh, the general manager, and guess what? We can, um, we're willing to accept that offer. I said, oh, really? Yeah, we're willing to accept that offer. I said, okay, no problem. He said, so um, when can we expect you back? Uh, never. Just remember what you just said, what you just told me. Apply that to the next person. Click, right? Done. <laughs> That's how I do business, people. The ones that know me, know me. They know how I am. I'm not just saying this stuff just to sound good. No, this is how I do it. I have the upper hand. It's my money. I came there with a with a check in hand. Right? Pre-approved. Good. It's all I needed was the vehicle. In and out. But they didn't want to play. So they didn't want to negotiate. I'm out like a scout on a new route. All right. This is Jermaine the Creative Fiend. Thank you guys for taking the time to check out this video. Don't forget to check that. Okay. It, that's that that's that gray line between, you know, deceptive, you know, unfair practices and stuff, because you the consumer is called the unsophisticated consumer. Y'all look that up. Right? You didn't know. You didn't know. But they should know. They knew that they're not supposed to have all that on there. They know that this stuff is not mandatory. Why did they put it on there? Something is, hey, I'm not making any kind of, I'm not offering any kind of financial or legal advice, people. I'm just saying things that I've seen. Seven out of 10, that's 70%. Random. 70% of these, those uh, agreements, or whatever, the purchase order were just jacked up. So do yourself a favor, review it, and see, it just, you ain't got, I'm not telling you to go after the dealer. I'm just saying review it and see if you, you fall in that category if those things were listed on your purchase order or your buy order and tell me if they ended up on that retail installment sales contract and that major amount of finance go higher. Right. You could have did it like I did. I'm like, Shh. I know I, my payment is going to be in the 400s guy and it's not going to be in the 400s with you adding all the stuff to it. So guess what? They had to go back and modify that. I got to modify that loan. Got to modify that loan or that, uh, what you call it? Secure credit transaction. That's what it is, not a loan. All right. Don't forget, guys, show me some love. Help me grow this channel. Share this information. All right. We got to stop falling for the okie doke. You have the upper hand. You do. Trust me. But you got to feel it. If you go in there, you know, with your head down, they're going to eat you up. They can smell fear. But don't go in there with your head down. Have your, do your research before you even go there about that vehicle. And I'm going to share on my members only. The breakdown, it can save you thousands of dollars, thousands. I've done it myself and family members and friends too. Thousands of dollars when you go purchase that vehicle for taking these steps, these steps that I'm going to share on for members only video, okay? So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget, show me some love. Give me that thumbs up though. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. I haven't checked the subscribe list, but I, I think I'm close to that 7,000. If I have not made it, say I. I it's no, no I and team. We. <laughs> To 7,000, we continuously growing. So I thank you guys for all the support and stuff. And uh, hey, don't forget, share some information. Share this content to help someone else out. Okay, catch you guys on the next one. Peace.